All right, well, welcome everybody. My name is Nick Martinez. For those of you that don't know me, if you're brand new, welcome to the welcome to the team, welcome to the community. I'm super excited to be on tonight and really just host a call about um, how you can grow your network, how you can expand your prove it business using a a probably underutilized tool uh, that we have at, at Prove It or really with any business, and it's doing a, a tasting or a booth. So tonight our goal is really to just demystify what it means to do one of these and hopefully inspire you to, to get one or two on the calendar um, every single month because it's, it's, it's an avenue that anybody can do, does not require a lot of time, does not require a lot of money, and can really compress time frames and the number of conversations that you'll get to start um, over a short period of time. So uh, if you're brand new to our conversation, tonight what we're talking about is doing a booth or a tasting. Um, I kind of divide them in my brain into two different categories. Uh, booth to me is having a paying for a table at some sort of expo or some sort of event, whether it's a craft fair, whether it's a fitness expo, whether it's this massive wellness expo, um, or it's, you know, having a, like a, there's a mall and they have a handful of vendors that are offering products or services. Um, it, that's a booth and it has tremendous value. The way I look at a tasting or a table is getting an opportunity maybe at a chiropractor's office or maybe at your local gym or maybe at a salon or even a barber shop where you basically just to get the setup shop and do tastings of ketones to the people that are coming in and out of the door. So it's not specifically a vendor event, but uh, you're given the opportunity to be somewhere and to basically have conversations on a consistent basis with people that are coming in and out. So tonight we have a handful of different people that are gonna share how they've been utilizing these, some for the last you know, six months, some for the last couple of years, and even others that have been doing this for the last four years, and kind of mastered the art of follow-up, the art of conversation. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the how of like what specifically you need to do, the like what to say and that kind of thing. And the, the overall why is really just creating conversations. At the end of the day, our goal in this business is to talk to new people every single day, about the 10-day Drink Ketones Challenge, about drinking ketones daily, rebooting monthly, basically introducing that conversation to people. And you can do that through a number of different ways. Social media is something that we talk about a lot, especially in our group. Um, you can do it through going out, wearing the conversation, and just talking to people as you're out. Uh, you can do it specifically through going to networking events. And then another way is by doing tastings or booths. And the neat thing with, with these is if you're somebody that might be a little bit shy or maybe you're not, you don't love just talking to people, talking to random people when you're out and about, this gives you a purpose. This gives you a reason, almost a platform to speak from, uh, which can be a lot of fun. And the other thing that I really want to, uh, to set an intention for with this is I want to change everybody's mindset around why you do a tasting. A lot of times are why you do a booth. A lot of times we think I'm gonna go there and I'm just gonna sell ketones, right? I'm gonna find as many people to buy our product as possible. I want you to think a little bit bigger than that because what if what you're doing on social media can also combine with what you do offline? And the sooner you're able to marry those two, the sooner you're able to combine offline and off online, before you know it, it creates this magical synergy. And here's what I mean by that. You're gonna hear a lot of tips and tricks about how to how to share, how to talk to people. But if you can leave with this one thing, no matter what your outcome of that event is, as far as sales go, uh, or as far as people to follow up with goes, uh, you'll have a, like that, that tasting or booth will have a long tail to it. Meaning in the future, something may come of it. And here's what I mean by that. If you have a booth and your number one outcome at that table is to grow your network on social media, all of a sudden it becomes way easier. All of a sudden when you're talking to people, you're just building a relationship and then you're inviting them to follow you or you're saying, here's my phone, send, uh, send yourself a friend request from me so that, you can, uh, that we, can, we can be friends and we can follow each other. Or you're asking, hey, are you on, on Facebook? I'd love to be your friend. Now, you might not do that with everybody, but if, if you left every single booth or tasting you did with 20 new Facebook friends, think about what those people are gonna be doing regardless of if they buy ketones today, tomorrow, or next week, they're following you. Now all the posting that you're doing is showing up in their feed. If you did one event a week and you had 20 new people that you were connected with each week, that's 80 new people a month that you didn't know before that were offline and are probably local to you, 
Now they're being, their, their, their mind is being seeded. They're building a relationship with you because they're watching you, right? They're learning more about you, your family. They're beginning to develop that trust. And now six months down the road, they're like, oh my gosh, like somebody just talked about keto and I'm interested, right? They may not have been interested in that moment, but now because you did a good job of building some quick rapport, which we're going to talk about, and then you also created a relationship via social media, now they've become one of your long-term followers or one of your long-term friends. So put that in your brain, like uh, remember that little piece because that's, that's like 1% shift that if you're already doing these can absolutely shift things. And if you haven't done them yet, just by applying that concept, uh, you'll be amazed at, uh, at the potential and the possibility. So um, the first person I wanna bring on is Aisha Vidal. And Aisha, let me see, do I see you? You can come off mute if you're, oh, there you are, I see ya. Um, Aisha and I have been friends for years and years and years, and she has always loved doing tables. And she's always had an art for it. So Aisha, I'd love for you just to share maybe your top three tips um, for doing a table. Like what are the three things that you, if you were talking to a brand new promoter, you would say, hey, make sure that you master these or make sure that you stick to these. Oh, okay. Um, one thing I would say is um, just be prepared. Be prepared for the booth itself. Have what you need, have your ketones, have your sample cups. Uh, have your info sheets that you can collect information. Um, have your, you know, if you want to sell samples there, have those as well. But the number one thing is to just be prepared um, is on my top list. And number two, the fortune is in the follow up. When you do get a, that information and you do collect it from someone that says, hey, I'd love to know more. Here's my phone number make sure you follow up with them. Send them a video, send them a sales flyer, send them, ask if they have any questions, but um, you've got to make sure that you follow up with them. And one easy way, and here's number three, one easy way that I use to follow up is whatever event I'm doing, whether it's a bridal show or um, a cancer run or I'm at uh, a flea market, it doesn't matter. I always say, hello, Julie, nice to meet you at the bridal show last weekend. Um, do you have any questions about the video that I sent you? So if I do that to everybody that I meet at that show and I mentioned bridal show and where it was, then I can go right back into my cell phone and go, who did I meet at that bridal show? So if I type in bridal on a search bar of my phone, those people are going to come right back up. And then I know exactly where I met them. I know exactly when I met them. And then I can also read back on the text message, messages. Did they respond or did they not respond? Um, and then I'll know how to follow up further from that. So those are my three. Uh oh, I can't hear you. I love it. I love it, Aisha. Thanks for sharing. Um, answer, answer me this question. As far as capturing information, how do you go about doing that? Well, I usually have a little slip, um, and on that slip, uh, I would have name, phone number, email address. Those are the only things I'm asking them for, okay? And then on the bottom of that sheet, I would say, are you interested in A, better health? Are you interested in B, earning free product? Or C, a rockin' business opportunity? And so based on that information, I'll know how important it is and how much longer I will take to follow up with them. If somebody checks the first box and just say, I'm interested in better health, I may reach out to, to them four times. If somebody says, I'm interested in better health, free product, and a rockin' business opportunity, I may follow up with them more and more and get them more plugged into uh, our Facebook groups. I'm going to just kind of stick tighter with them because they have all three needs. So that's, um, that's how I do that. How important do you think follow up is in your doing of booths? Well, the fortune is in the follow up. If you don't follow up with the people that you connect with, number one, you've already made them a promise. 
right? Because they've already walked up to your booth. You've explained to them or listened to them talk about how they've tried ketones, ketosis. I tried to do that. I couldn't stick with it. Well, would you like me to send you more information? The minute I say that, I've just made a promise to them. And if I don't follow up with them, I just broke that promise. So you may as well, that relationship is already compromised when you say you're going to do something and then you don't do it. So uh, follow up is super, super important. And sometimes if the show goes really quiet, I'll follow up right in that moment and send the information. Um, if the show is super busy, then I follow up immediately that night, at least with the first follow-up video. And then I may follow up with them. Do they have any questions the following day? Awesome. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Aisha, for sharing. Appreciate that. Um, next person that we have to share is Amber Lukex. And are you on, Amber? I don't see you. If you are on, unmute yourself um, and say hi. All right. She was supposed to be on. A, something may have happened. Um, we'll move right along then to Joan. Joan, would love for you to come off mute. How's it going? Joan, you're frozen. <laughs> Uh-oh. Joan lives out on a dairy farm, so maybe her internet is not working. Joan, can you hear us? All right. Oh, for two. <laughs> Moving right along, um, next person that we're going to have share, if, uh, Joan, if you're able to get your computer working. Here's just my phone. Am I, am I back? You're back. There we go. Okay. My internet connection is very unstable tonight. It's busy time of year, out, or day out here on the farm. People are all using the internet. Let's try it. If I can't, if, I, if you lose me, just wave at me, Nick, because I can see you. Well, no, I can't. Hey, I, I can hear you. Fantastic. Me. Okay. What are your questions, Nick? My question to you, Joan, is... Um, like, what do you say? How do you get people to come to your table? And what do you, what do you talk about? How do you engage in conversation? Like, what's your dialogue look like? Okay, number one, what I've always done, and I did booths for my other business as well. Um, I stand at the edge of the booth. Okay, I don't stand behind the table until it's necessary for pouring ketones and somebody is standing behind the table usually. But I stand at the edge of the booth and I greet the people that are walking in the aisle. You know, um, I'm looking for somebody that's looking. So if they put eye contact on us, you know, I'll greet them with a hi, a hello. You want to try some, you know, have you tried ketones yet? You know, I ask them a question. They have to answer me. Some people will just keep walking. Other people we were able to pull in. And the ones that are looking come into the booth and then we can start pouring them ketones, giving them samples. Awesome. And as far as samples go, how do you do that? We mix up like five to six flavors, depending upon how big the event is, just like you would at a keto life party. And we have little cups and we let them sample it and somebody is shaking and pouring ketones. And that's where more of the conversation will happen then. And then we just kind of lead them through the samples and then over to how do you want to get started? If awesome. they have it, you know, and then they can, they can say no at any time, but a lot of them, it really works. I love it. I love it. So what would you say like would be your top three tips for somebody that's doing maybe a table for the first time? Don't be afraid to talk to people. Number one, just like I said, you got to bring the people into your booth, get out from behind that table, have your tray. Even I would even do a tray with some samples on it. You know, you know, pick one flavor, heart tart or raspberry lemonade and have little cups on it. And, you know, and then if you have a second person working the booth, the other person can walk them through more different samples because it's just being friendly. Awesome. And what, what, what were your last maybe two or three were venues or events? What, what were they specifically? Oh, we may have just lost her. Um, in fact, in the chat, for those of you that have ever done a tasting, a table, a booth, whatever you want to call it, um, type what the last one was or what the last couple were. Because I think what you'll find interesting is that there is an infinite number of things to do. We may get like stuck, oh, I don't know if there's anything around me. I don't know what to do. And the reality 
is there's tons of different places that you can go to shake up ketones, uh, whether it's somebody's actual event. Oh, you're back now. What were the last couple that you did? We did a car show and then we did a huge, huge, huge cranberry fest in Wisconsin, which was basically the biggest thing, a little city that turned up for three days to do a craft show, but there was all kinds of vendors there. There was food vendors. Um, Deb selected the, that one and it really turned out well. We got people into, we had tents that time and it was outside. So we had only two good days of weather, but you know, it was fun. And it's always fun to be with the team. We go with a couple, myself and a couple other people. And you know, we just talk about ketones. We have fun together. And if, when you're having fun in your booth, people are attracted to that. I love it, I love it. Um, well, thank you, John, for sharing. Appreciate it. And keep typing if you have done something like this. I'm just reading the comments. I see bridal show, music festival, school fundraiser, um, dog groomer event, roller derby monthly. I mean, there's, again, like there's no right or wrong and there's an infinite number of things to do. So that's fantastic. Uh, thank you, Joe, for, or Joan, for sharing. Um, next, I have uh, Joe and Tracy on, if you guys want to come off mute. Um, I'd love for you to share your, first introduce yourselves, and then uh, share your top three tips. And also, I want you to talk a little bit about table setup. What does that look like? How do you go about that? Why me first? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Joe Snyder. Um, I'm uh, Tracy's downline, but when we do events, we or when either one of us have an event, we tend to do them together um because we found out that numbers is really important um having just one person and at a table usually don't work um so we usually go to help each other out um if it's her event then we let her kind of run everything and i just kind of help pour samples but we bounce off of each other a lot with that um when it comes to the setup tracy nor uh she started it i perfected it we'll just say that <laughs> um, <laughs> But we kind of do the same thing that Joan does. Um, we always have the five staple flavors um, and or six now, including the Swiss. And then we'll usually throw in one unleashed flavor. Mm -hmm. um, there for a while, we can only do the Blue Ocean. And then here recently, we'll throw in at least one or two of the seasonals. And we'll kind of uh, decide that based on the event as well. Yeah. If we're not going to have a lot of foot traffic. We're not going to pour the extra ketones. But we always have them at least on display as well as the protons. We're gonna show you our, our setup. We actually have it on the other side of the camera. But <laughs> um, We've been having fun. <laughs> All right. We I always have the product. Yeah. Always have the product. Yeah. Um, uh, we don't normally have trouble getting people to our booth because no. as you can tell, we play off of each other. We have a lot of fun. Um, ketones is about being in a great mood. So you can't be sitting back behind your table with a mean mug on your face. Nobody's gonna come talk to you. You gotta have fun, be energetic, be enthusiastic talk to people and that's what we do so we love doing these booths we do a ton of them and um, we find out about them a lot through social media and it's not necessarily that we're seeking them out we have so many people that tag us message us say hey they're looking for a vendor and we get word of mouth really more than anything don't you think so yeah actually i had um i was added this week alone into two groups um that are in the Cleveland area. We're in Southern Ohio. So Cleveland's like a four hour drive from us. So we're going to Cleveland. <laughs> we are going to <laughs> Cleveland. We had, uh, I got added into two groups for Cleveland events. So if you're not already using social media to find the events, use social media to find the events. And it's super, super easy. How do you, you know, do that? Um, go into your events tab. And um, if you're looking for, for instance, for us, if we wanted to look for something in Cleveland, you can literally go to events search in there Cleveland Ohio and it'll pull up and you can change the mile radius whatever Everything. and what's going on and you can actually even um, filter it down to what type of event it is so we are now starting to take more yeah. um, action with that part of it but you can do a booth by yourself it just you know it, it, it can be difficult if you've got a lot of people coming at your table at once and sometimes people are impatient you don't want them to walk away and not get any information so if at all possible get a team member or someone um, to come and help you out Absolutely. it really makes a huge difference but joe's going to turn the camera around real quick <laughs> and we're just going to sit here and show you what we did in the living room 
We do this a lot though. So this is actually our setup. Um, but we always start out with, um, I'll try to get a little bit closer for you guys. But we always have the seasonal flavors. This is where everybody can get like um, information. These little cards here, Tracy. Yep. Um, we have them fill out their info. I don't know if you can see the card, but it has their info, um, what they're looking for. And then on the back, we have them keep this card. So as they travel through. through the table, taste the flavors, we want them to write on the back of the card what their favorite flavors were. And at the very end, we'll usually do a giveaway, which and is, we make sure they're getting that packet of ketones. And then the we just put them in here and we draw. And even if they don't win, we make sure we follow up with them get in contact and say, hey, I'm sorry you didn't win the drawing, but I don't want you to miss out on any opportunity with ketones. Um, we do get a lot of people to immediately, we add them on Facebook right there on the spot. Um, we do that a lot. We don't yes. have any problems with that. So we can make sure they get info about sales and anything new coming out. Um, and to answer Terry's question, yes, we usually give away at least one packet of ketones. Um, if it's a bigger event, we'll do two giveaways, usually a cheap shaker bottle from the local dollar store or Walmart mm -hmm. or wherever. And um, I've been throwing in Mitoplex with it as well because mm -hmm. I feel like Mitoplex is like crucial. But, but they love, and you don't have to do this, but the collars. Oh yes, the collars. It doesn't packs. matter what we have at this table. People come to our table because they love the collars. They want to know what's in these little plastic shot glasses that you can get at any dollar store. 25 of them in a pack for a dollar. They're amazing. And they get a lot of people over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love the colors. It's very colorful. Um, so when when we get the uh, when this goes into the replay, okay, um, we will put this into the Facebook group, and then we'll start adding some resources that Maddie's going to create in order for you guys to use as printouts. Um, so I know you're seeing some stuff that uh, Joe and Tracy use and there's different sheets that other people use. What we'll do is try to um, kind of collaborate on all of that and give it to you guys as uh, tools that you can have for your tables um, because it's nice to have some of that stuff and ideas. Um, I'll have everybody that's speaking on tonight just comment in there with a couple of their um, things that they talked about tonight that you'll be able to utilize and take with you. I love the colorful shot glasses. Um, that's really, really awesome. Um, so thanks for sharing. What would you say are your top three tips you'd give somebody that's going to do their first tasting or table? Presentation. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that goes for more than just the table, but wearing, wearing the conversation also. Yeah. Um, no. And top, one of the best things you can do is go out and talk to other vendors. Yes. That's where you're going to get a lot of your contacts and you're also going to be able to use them as a resource to find out about other events that they may know about that you didn't know. So that's huge to me. And if you found out about the event through a friend and it kind of hooked you up with who's hosting the event, make sure you go out of your way to talk to the host who actually put the event on. Mm -hmm. I always try to add them on Facebook because if they're going to be having another event, they're going to be posting it, or we're going to be the first person that they're going to reach out to asking us to come back. So we've done that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it's helped us get out of our area by doing that as well. Awesome. Very cool. Well, thanks guys for sharing. Appreciate you. Um, you. I love your table setup. Super powerful. <laughs> now guys don't get overwhelmed thinking that you have to be as beautiful as theirs. The reality is don't mess up good for perfect. Just do it. I've done some tables myself and they don't look anything nearly as pretty as that. Um, that's not like my strong suit, but I talked to a bunch of people, get a bunch of names. So you can combine whatever your strengths, whatever strengths that you have and what you're good at. Um, I just heard that Amber is on now and Amber, I'd love for you to come off mute. Um, Amber and I were talking a little bit earlier and she's been doing like, just, she's been asking people to do tables. Tell me a little bit about that, Amber. Uh, maybe not booths or you've done some booths, but not in the traditional sense of like, this is a vendor event. How do you go about getting a table in front of, let's say a gym or something like that? Um, yeah, so all y'all tables look like amazing. That's crazy. I would totally walk up to that too. I love all those colored cups. But um, yeah, I'm like, wow, my, my like jam is like a little bit more simple. Like I work out at this place called Fitwall and like people see me every day, you know, so you get a little bit of like, um, 
uh, like trustability, validity, validity, right? Because they know you, they know you're not just like trying to sell it. They see me in my ketone gear when I'm working out. Um, you know, you're kind of like part of part of that equation. That's my gym specifically. But you know, um, I, I basically you go to the front desk and you kind of ask them if they would mind if you had a table because it does. It's you know, ketones are performance focused, so they do kind of you know run in line with um, you know anyone who's going to a gym. So for me, it's easier. Like KLPs are are hard for me to have you know, at my house, because you're like inviting people and then like, oh my God, no one comes. But like, I do awesome talking to random ass people who like, you know, they know what they're getting into. They like walk up to a table. They're like, what's a ketone? I had a, you know, custom tablecloth printed out. I just throw it on. I keep it like way simple. I've got like a couple empty boxes sitting there, you know, for flair, hop and flair. And then I've, you know, did, got all like, I'm a network engineer. So I like, you know, used some ideas from like Maddie V and other people and kind of like photoshopped and illustrated out this like tablecloth. That's about as crazy as I got. But I also have like a, um, a before and better picture book that they can go through. And then there's like me with my drink ketone shirt. The, the tablecloth says drink ketones, by the way. That's, there's not a lot of like stuff I have around me. I just have drink ketones and drink ketones, right? And then everyone's like, well, I get those arms. And I'm like, well, yes, if you work out and drink ketones. So, um, you know, but when they come up, they know what they're getting into. And uh, I think like the main tips for me that, that have been um, to keep it like less overwhelming because tables can be overwhelming. Tons of people are like, holy crap, like I can't talk to these people. Um, you know, it, it's, it's daunting to have random people come up and you don't have to, it like, plays in with everything we always learn at events and everything. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to be an expert, you know, it's just you have a couple tools that like attract people because all the table is doing is attracting. It's very simple. So you put a smile on, you have a good attitude, you know, make people want to like zoom into your energy and then pour ketones. Give them, little, I use little two or three ounce clear shot glasses and I mix up three different versions and we like talk about flavors and I hear a little about them. And, you know, then the other part fact that I get is, you know, they I write their information down. So they write it down for me and then that way I have a contact to follow up with but they've had this like amazing conversation, you know, and heard to heard all about ketones for that little five minutes and got to look through a book of like amazing pictures. So um, yeah, it's the don't mess up good for perfect thing that made it a lot easier for me if I didn't have to think about my banners and billboards and stuff. Um, another thing that I do that I like to do is um, I will always be and with the 10 day challenge, it's so hard now because you don't really have to have the five and 10. But it's nice to have some product and people like a sale, right? So I always offer like a five day at a discount. So if they buy a five day, they can have a discount. They can buy two and they'll get this, you know, if it's like minus $5 or something. Um, and then I always have like the sign up now, you know, if you sign up at that table that very minute, I have my computer always that I like hotspot my phone with and we get them signed up. And if they hop on smart ship, I'll give them like a shaker, nothing crazy. Like it's like a dollar store shaker, but they're really excited. And then, then I, I throw in a free five day because, you know, they took that leap of faith with me and like, they got it. Let's get them going. So a lot of people are like, what? I get that. If I do this now. And then it, I, every time I do a table, I get like customer, one customer at least. And so that's worth it. Awesome. 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 I love it. Um, keeping it simple, just having fun in roll. <laughs> energy. It's all about energy. And, and I, I do love your energy. That's fantastic. Um, thanks for sharing, uh, Amanda, or sorry, Amber, and the next person. I get that, that a lot. It's okay, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at the name right there, and it says Amber. And I'm like, yeah, Anything with an A. Usually hey, how it goes. we're close. We're close. Um, the next person, I won't screw up her name because she's my sister, uh, is Christina. <laughs> and Christina and I were talking probably like six, eight months ago, nine months ago, and she's like, I just got to figure out how to talk to more people. And I said, well, you know, why don't you figure out a place to go do tastings? And at the time, she'd never done a tasting, never done a table, um, but literally has mastered the art of just putting herself out there. And Christina, what I'd love for you to share is just like, what did you do? Because Christina has been in barber shops, she's been in salons, and she's been in multiple different gyms all within like a 15 mile radius of her house. And she literally just walked into businesses and said, hey, um, so tell us, how did you get those opportunities to um, do a tasting? And then what have you learned since doing them over the last nine months? There we go. Uh, yeah, so I went to, I have like three um, strip mall areas near my house, like same equidistant, and, and then another farther away. 
So what I did was I first just went and looked at what are the businesses in this strip mall area that might have people going in to better themselves in some way or another, whether that's getting their hair cut or their nails done or uh, going to a gym. And I literally just walked into the businesses at a time of day. Actually, it didn't matter. It was whenever I was a free. And I walked into the businesses and asked if I could talk to the manager or someone in charge. And I asked, I said that I have a health product that is fairly new and it helps with energy, focus, sleep, mood, fat loss, all our five benefits. And then asked if I could come on some time and do a tasting, a free tasting to share about the product. And then once they said yes or no, then I, or let me connect you to someone else. Then I was able to then um, find out when their busiest times were and then find when those busiest times matched to my, my free time. And then I was able to come the first time. It was usually like a trial. They didn't say it was a trial basis, but it was usually a trial. Yes, come this time. And then usually that extended to come whenever you want or come weekly if you want. Um, so the businesses that first said yes were barbershops, two barbershop shops for men, and then a salon uh, and for women and for whoever, actually, but a salon. And then that grew to gyms, actually then a gym, and then I grew to other gyms in the area and um, have been kicked out of one gym for various reasons. Also have stayed at one gym and gone to another one, um, but for positive, yeah, positive reasons, I guess. But uh, the beauty has been that through that, I've learned how to be like, my belief has grown, my ability to talk about the product. I've gotten so many opportunities to like, practice that. And then I have kind of figured out like every space is a little bit different. Every gym has a little different setup. Some people let me, uh, well, so like to the barbershops, I didn't have a table. I brought a backpack and I brought a shaker bottle and my backpack had a, had a Ziploc bag with some little tiny cups and I would shake up one pack at a time. Actually, I would go to three, three barbershops within a Saturday, two hours of time. And I would go from one to the other to the other. And I would spend 20, 30 minutes in each one. And I would just, I built a relationship with the owners of the barbershops and with the barbers themselves. And then as, when people were sitting waiting for to get their hair cut, then I would walk around with my shaker bottle and say, hey, would you like to try some ketones? And they would say yes or no, or they would say, uh, it looks like you're bringing something out of your backpack that you made in your kitchen. And I would talk about it and get to share more about the product and about what it's doing for me and for other people. Um, I have little business cards from Prove It, the little square ones, which are really fun. People usually like really love those and I love spinning them too. So they're, they're fun, like attention grabber. Um, and then it was just an opportunity to connect with people on a regular basis. So through that, I would, people would start to like, you know, sometimes guys go to get their haircuts every two weeks, every week, every two weeks. So I would start to see people regularly and some of them I would recognize, some I wouldn't. And so that'd be sometimes awkward, but I would usually be like, ah, do I have, I talked to you already or no? Um, and would offer them whatever way they wanted to get started. And usually that follow-up was super important too. So for me, the the gyms had a, always have a table that I can use. It's either a small circular one or like a mini square one. So I have a black sheet, a bed sheet, and that's all I use. I put that on the top. I have a silver platter tray from, from uh, the dollar store and I have white um, like Dixie cups. And then I only bring one shaker bottle and one flavor and I give people like this much because they're not gonna get any ketosis anyways from this much. So I let them try it and try flavors. Sometimes I'll switch the flavors up. So if they're, I see them often, they can try a new flavor. Uh, and then I usually just ask them as they pass by, I say, hey, what do you, do you want to try some ketones today? Or have you tried ketones yet? Or you ready yet? If I've seen them many times. So it just depends. And then for me to keep track of everyone, what I found that works really well for me is the app called Google Keep. It allows you to have notes that you can organize by like pressing and grabbing and moving them around. And I keep a running tab of all my tastings. So I just go in there, open my note that has tastings and I put the date on it and I put the person, like number one, and I put the person's name. As soon as I talk to them, I put the name and I put a little note about them, something I want to remember about them. And then now that I've been going so many times consistently, I put reconnect. And if I've reconnected with them, then I put their name and then I can follow up with them and say, hey, I know I saw you. Uh, it was great to see you again. Where are you at in your, in your conversation? 
Um, I also have like Googled vendor events in the area just to find like usually there's a list, some company, some organization has a list of vendor events. Um, and I also, after my tastings, I come home and I schedule the follow-ups on my phone in my Google calendar. So I'll, I'll type like super simple, I'll type LA Fitness uh, follow-up one, and then I'll copy and paste that. And then I'll choose a certain number of days out and I'll copy and paste it again and put two. And then I'll choose certain days out, copy and paste it again and put three. And I go all the way to 10. And that's what I do. And then every day I can look on my calendar and say, oh, I need to follow up with this date from LA Fitness. And I'll look in my tastings, Google Keep and be able to know who I can follow up that day. And usually it's the same thing that I send to every person unless there's a regular conversation going on. So my three things, I don't know, Nick, if you want me to you can go to my three things. Go for it. Okay, so my three things. One is energy and expectation. So energy, Nick told me at my first event, I was super nervous, it was a, it was a health fair. Um, and he told me, be the energy in the room, be the brightest smile, the brightest person in the room. And that, helped me to have like confidence. Oh yeah, I can be this brightest smiley. I'm not really that like a bubbly person, but I was able to be a bright smiling person talking to people having energy. So I've noticed that people in the gym that I'm regularly seeing, they'll comment on, oh, you were really nice. Or, oh, you, I, I see you over all there, there all the time. And you're my girls. I bring my girls with me. So they're sitting and looking at their iPad, but they're, they're always there. And we set an expectation, the girls and I set an expectation prior to coming in. So with the energy comes expectation. We set an expectation, we verbally say it every single time when before we start talking to anyone or I talk, start talking to anyone, I say, I'm going to see the right people who are ready for this, who need a change in their lives and who are ready to share this with me. And that expectation sets my intention and my mindset for who I'm talking to, what, who I'm going to meet. Um, and also... I don't care what the outcome is. So if I can greet someone and say, hey, have a great day, or if they say no, which they often do, as they pass by my table, then have a great day. Have a, I hope your workout was great. And that energy is such a positive uh, space for people, if, especially when they're tired, especially if they, if they finish their workout and they're tired. The second thing is story over expectation, or story over science and powerful questions. So I love science and I love the science behind our product and I get caught up into that and have gotten way too caught up in that over time. And so I've learned that my story is powerful and people's stories are powerful. So the powerful questions that I ask are where would, if better were to show up in your life, where would you, what would it look like? Would your day look like tomorrow? Or what of these betters would you enjoy? And that usually opens up more conversation than me talking about the science or my story, or my pointing to my before and better picture and saying, that was me, and this is why I entered the conversation, this is where I am now, it has, is much more powerful, although a lot of people want the science, some people do, some people don't, um, to move that conversation. And then third is the consistency in my presence as well as my follow-up. So I've found, especially in gyms and barbershops and salons, that the more consistent I am to show up every week, every two weeks, that the more that people trust me and know that I'm actually doing this and not just there to sell them something, but I, we have something to give and that they start to, I start to build relationship. I don't know any of these people. I've never met them before. This is the first time I've seen them, but because I'm seeing them week in week out, I'm starting to build relationship. And because I'm following up with them on a regular basis that I've scheduled, then now we're starting to have a relationship some more than others. But now I've had one person say, I always see when I'm on the bike and I finally told myself I'm going to come over and talk to you. I usually bypass you, she said, and I go around the other way and exit the, the gym the other way. But today I said, I need to come talk to you. And if I wasn't there every week, she might not have done that. She might not have had the courage to come up and talk to me. Wow. That's awesome. So many gold nuggets there. That's uh, fantastic. Thank you, Christina, for sharing. Mm -hmm. Um. So at the end of the day, uh, guys, doing these type of activities is all about creating more conversations. And it's kind of one of those things, don't mess up good for perfect. Everybody you heard from tonight does it a little bit differently. No one's the same. So all you got to do is show up as yourself, uh, bring some tools and different resources along with you. If you need help with that, reach out to the, your support team. Anybody that you're working with probably has somebody that, that has done tables in the past in their business. 
and they'll be able to provide you those. Uh, we'll be posting this replay and creating more resources within the Better Starts Here 2020 group. Um, but right now, like I guarantee you, right, we have 59 people on the Zoom at the moment. If every single one of us went and scheduled one to five events over the next 60 days, like just think of what that would look like. If you got all of your promoters to do the same thing and did that alongside talking to people while you're out, having keto life parties, uh, messaging people that you already know, posting on Facebook and Instagram. If you did that in addition to, think of how it could shift that needle, right? You don't, you don't have to say, hey, I'm not a booth person. I'm not going to do that. You can say, hey, let me see how I can incorporate this in. And what I love uh, with Christina and Amber, who shared there at the end, it doesn't have to necessarily be a big vendor event or a small vendor event. It can be some random place. <laughs> and sometimes those are the best because those, those people are like, they're usually a captive audience. I mean, there's a million different places that you can go and just put yourself to share ketones. And I saw one comment, Terry said, uh, never paid, um, you never had to pay them. Why is that? It's just because she asked, right? So most of us just never ask. But if you go into local places, places that you're a patron of and just say, hey, would it be all right if, the only thing that they're going to do is say yes, or they're going to say no. If they say no, it's not the end of the world. You just go find some other place. If they say yes, fantastic, right? It's just kind of like this business. You're introducing it to people. You're not attached to the outcome. So if you combine that, that thought with the, all right, where can I find the events that are already put together? Um, one other thing to note is don't get awestruck or um, super like fixated on events that say they're going to bring through 10,000 people. Um, I get that a lot. Nick, this event's going to have 10,000 people. It's going to be incredible. The reality is those events have hundreds and hundreds of vendors and they get vendor fatigue and, and there's no way that you can physically talk to that many people, right? So you might end up paying six or $700 for a table. I've done this before. Um, and you end up getting the same outcome as if you went to a flea market on a Saturday where you paid $50 for a table or you went to a small craft show where you paid $75. So really be smart about your budget in spending as far as like cable costs go, knowing that you could probably find opportunities for free or costs that are negligible. But if you do have something that's a little bit um, more on the expensive side, uh, just bring other reps with you because if there are that many people, you're gonna probably need multiple people to talk in order to make the, uh, the cost worthwhile. So I hope this uh, information has been valuable for you guys tonight. Um, we're going to sign off. We will post the replay of this in the uh, Better Starts Here 2020 group, and you'll get to have comments and notes from all the people that spoke on here, as well as some uh, resources as we go. So with that, have an amazing night. And uh, I just saw a walk around and network. Yes, anytime there's a vendor event, go talk to all the vendors. They're just as, uh, they need ketones way more than anybody else that's coming through your booth, right? So that's super powerful. Thank you, Amanda and Chad. So have a good one and we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.